I see so many people, I look in their eyes, they don't even look like they care. They don't even look like they're competitive. How the hell are you gonna compete with a person like me who's fired up, ready to deliver, is training and growing, that's a master my craft and I got this energy. We are going to learn some good stuff today, guys. I am excited. I've got some firepower for you guys. And so today, before we get started, man, I just want you to know, man, attitude is a perspective. Like, attitude is 100% a skill. What's your attitude look like? What's your posture look like on this call? Are you sitting forward? Are you ready to take some things away and really go change your business, elevate your business one little inch? Man, some of these little things can change your life so drastically. It's not a lot of the big things. You don't just wake up with a, a massive idea and it's like, boom, my life changed. It's like a lot of these little, little steps that just calculate to be this big stuff. So, I wanna thank you guys. I wanna thank you guys for showing up to these calls. I'm gonna tell you guys, if you're new, who I am. My name's Ian Macklin. I started the Elliott Group with Andy, um, and I just realized over my sales career, there was a lot of things that I was good at. There was a lot of things I wasn't good at. I became a top performer in the car industry, you know, top point oh 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 one percent for you know 10 years some people can't do it for a month and what I learned is uh, some of the things that I'm gonna teach you guys so some of them may work for you some of them may not some of them may you may disregard but one thing is for sure you can always learn something and I know that through this coaching you're gonna learn a lot because I've got people on here that have scaled with me for years I've got businesses on here that have scaled with me for years and I got people that are just like a little rocket ship ready to just Woo! Just take off and go, you know? So some of you guys are those little rocket ships and you're just ready to, to kick some butt, man. So today's title of what we're gonna train on it's probably not what you think. You know, we're always teaching sales, but also we gotta teach you to unlearn some things. So this is six reasons why you're not selling more. Six reasons why you're not selling more. And a lot of the times, man, this was more important to me than learning something new because I'm like, dang, I'm doing that. Or like, ah, I didn't even realize that. Like, you know, I didn't even realize I was doing that. You know, basketball players like Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, they go back and watch their game footage. Why? So they can see what they're doing. They can see what they're doing wrong. They're like, I can't believe, you know, I was, I was shooting that way. I was moving that way. I was running that way. You know, boxers watch all their, their, their tape, man, just seeing where, just where they're, where they're, where they're lining up. So today you got to unlearn some things. You got to grow, man. And um, if you can do that, I really feel like you can be recession proof. When I started in sales in 2007 and eight, you know, uh, that was when some of you guys were born, uh, man, there was like a lot of uncertainty in the market, right? There's a lot of like uncertainty. What's that mean? You know, housing was going down. People were losing everything. Businesses were closing down. You know, we got all this other crazy stuff going on, man. And everybody's doing this. <laughs> And it was loud, it was noisy. And what I realized is, is in sales, you really can control your own economy if you're really good, if you're really good at what you do. If you're the top 1% of what you do and you become really good in times like this, well, when it becomes easy like it was for the past three years, you would have made three times the amount of money that you made because you're like, oh my God, it's easy. So. Whatever's a challenge to you, you need to be looking at it grateful that you have it. I was grateful that I was raised in these hard times of sales where we had to go get it. We had to go attack. We had to go, we had to go be the best possible version of us, man. We had to be competitive, okay? I see so many people, I look in their eyes, they don't even look like they care. They don't even look like they're competitive. How the hell are you gonna compete with a person like me who's fired up, ready to deliver, is training and growing, that's a master my craft, and I got this. Hey guys, it's the Macklin Twins. Thank you for watching. If you need anything, anything at all, go on ahead and reach out to us, 480-780-2203. Just send us a text with what you need and we got your back. And in the description, you have a free vault of personal development, sales training, and mindset training. You can join us. It's free mentorship. Click the link. Let's go. We'll see you on the other side. Energy. You're like, well, I don't want that energy. Good. Stay with your energy. My energy is this competitive spirit where I will go get it. And for some reason, I've always been able to get it. And I've always been able to keep it. I have lost it, but I've been able to keep it. And I've been able to stay humble, learn these things, self-correct, and man, I just love to learn. So we are gonna kill it. Today is six reasons to unlearn. If you have questions, you can throw them in the chat. Um, but we're gonna get kind of started on number one. 
And before I go into number one, I want to tell you a really quick story. You know, there was a, has anybody ever heard of the, the chicken and the eagle? The chicken and the eagle story goes like this in a 30 second story. There was a chicken, you know, and there was an eagle and he was separated at birth with chickens. You know, and they kind of looked the same, they grew up the same. And this little eagle, he's sitting with the chickens, eating the chicken poop, plucking around and just eating the chicken poop, running with these little old chickens. And they're telling him, oh man, look at those eagles. You can't fly with them, those are eagles, man. Man, you can't you can't go with those eagles they can fly they're strong they're big they can do all of these different things man and uh, so for years he hung around with just the chickens eating chicken shit you know really upset that he had this potential in him but he wasn't pursuing I relate to that story really big because you know I know I had this potential inside of me but for a lot of years I didn't want to unlock it. I didn't really want to pursue it. I didn't really develop it. I told myself I was going to do something and then I never did it and then I hated me. And then I looked in the mirror and I'm like what's wrong with me? What was wrong with me is number one, working hard, working hard. In sales, a lot of people could be de developing hard, but they're not like the, the eagle that's out there flying, attacking, growing, believing in himself, doing the work. That eagle one day woke up and said, man, you know what? I'm gonna fly with those chickens. I'm gonna go fly with those chick. I'm gonna go fly with those eagles. And you know what he did? He jumped off the cliff and he started freaking flying. He just did the work. He started flapping. And it's crazy when you're flapping where you start going. But a lot of people ain't flapping. A lot of people are just sitting with the chickens, eating chicken shit, wondering why they have what they have. Well, why you have what you have is because you're probably not working towards that potential. And if you are working towards that potential, you feel like I feel right now, which is you're in progress. Anybody ever go to the gym, they're working out really hard, and they're like, yes! And then you go to the gym sometimes, you're bullshitting, you go on your phone, and then you leave the gym like disgusted with yourself. I don't know if that, if you guys have ever felt that, you're like, damn, I shouldn't have turned those calls. I shouldn't have did that. You were sitting there eating with the chickens, man. You were distracted. So number one is working hard. So many salespeople right now, they want it easy. They want it easy. They are looking for the easy route. They are actively like, what's the hack? How do I make it easy? Number one, outwork everybody. Man, for 10 years, there's not one salesperson that ever sold next to me in this nation that didn't say I could, didn't outwork them. Now listen, I'm not telling you to uh, you know do it the old ways, which was like give up on your families, never ever come home. Like that's how we did it. Okay, there's things that we can learn from for that. You know, I was in like a dark hole for 10 years. I went started when I was in sales in 18, and I woke up and I was 30 30 years old, and I was like, where did the last 10 years go? Where did the last 10 years go? But I'll tell you what. At least I developed a skill of working hard because there was a lot of people that did what I did. They showed up half the time. They woke up 10 years later and they had nothing. At least I had a mentality, a grit, a skill set, a relentless approach, and like a fortitude with inside of me shaped through those 10 years of the car business. But in 10 years, you're going to get to where you're at no matter what. In one year, you're gonna have results or you're not gonna have results. It's super simple. So what are your results gonna be in, in, in 30 days? What are your results gonna be in 60 days? Are you gonna be sitting on a call like this, like, man, I don't know why this isn't working. It ain't working because you're not working. It ain't working because you're not thinking. You got to be creative. You got to be hungry. I can't factory install hunger in you. You gotta wake up and decide why you wanna go get it more than anybody else. Man, my mom almost had her legs blown off in the military. She's got a bad back. My dad left when I was a kid. All of these amazing things. Notice how I said amazing. You know why? Because it developed this hunger that when I showed up, I knew I could be the one for my family in sales. I could be the guy that could make a million dollars. I believed that. There's some of you that don't believe it. I can't fix you. You got to know who you are. You got to know what you're about. You got to know that, listen, dude, I was a broke kid from Denver, Colorado that never had $50 in my hand. I got in sales. I made $500. i am like, wow, could you imagine if I get good at this, I could probably make $500,000. And then it happened. Okay? But did it happen overnight? No. It happened with all of the daily disciplines. Daily disciplines. Waking up early, knowing that I'm getting further, Get my ass kicked. You know when's the, the hardest time to stay on track? Is when you get your ass kicked after you're working really hard and you have to convince yourself that like, hey, it's okay, this is how it's supposed to be. Listen, let me tell you a little hack on that. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. If you go to work today with the best attitude ever and you get your legs blown off by customers and everybody and everything's wrong, what you gotta learn to tell yourself is good. This is good for me. It's 
good for me. It's no big deal. This is exactly how Ian says it should be. This is exactly how he, this is it. I'm on to something. I'm on to something. I swear to God, if you can tell yourself, hey, I'm on to something, it should be hard, then you're on the right path. If you have nothing hard in your life right now, you are dead, you're not facing anything, and I'm sorry, you are the guy that's on the wrong path. If your life is easy right now, and it's just cool and comfortable and chill, bro, you ain't playing hard. You're not in the game, son. You're not in the game, okay? You know, I actively tried to make my job a little bit harder. Some of you guys know my lead story. I'm kind of, I got, I got a name for branding and marketing because I just knew how to attract business. But number one, you got to become attractive to the market. You got to become attractive to the market. What's that mean? People want to see that you're alive. People want to see that you're, you care. People want to see that you're the expert of your business. They want to see that you're this person that represents whatever product you represent. Okay. If you don't have that, you need to become that. If you don't have that, you need to become it. Whatever business you're in, Shifley Auto, Brandon Sandoval, they sell Facebook Marketplace. He needs to be talking about that every day, all day, everywhere. He needs to be the loudest on social media, creating attention and outworking everybody in that company. When you think of Shifley Auto, you shouldn't even think of Shifley, you should think of Brandon. That's how much I want it. When you think of the Elliott Group, I'm like, man, I got a big guy to compete with, Andy, but I, I want it. I, t I wake up pissed off every day because sometimes, because he's always telling me he wants it more than me. I'm like, no, you don't. And he's like, yeah, well, look at my results. And I'm like, damn, you're right. All right, I got to get more. You know what I'm saying? You're right about that. All right, I want it more. How, how do we get there? Okay. Number one, you gotta become attractive to the market. You gotta work hard. Can, can you tell when you walk into a store and you come across somebody that's working hard? Can you? Can you, come across, can you tell when you walk across somebody that's stagnant, in stagnation, they're retreating, they're in a defensive posture, they're in a defensive state? Guys, here's the hack in sales. When people walk up to you, they can tell if they want to do business with you or not. They can already tell just by the look in your eye, just by your micro mannerisms. When they, when they hear you over the phone, do you sound like you care or do you sound like you're thinking about what to say because you haven't really prepared, you haven't really studied, but you're wondering why you don't get the results? Number one, work hard. Work hard on your skill. Work hard on your job. Work hard on your mentality. Is this how you live? This is my sport. This is my sport. This is what I do. This is the only thing I do. Everything that I do has to do with this. All my preparation. My wife has to turn, turn. She literally has to just pull, peel me back all the time. She's like, Ian, calm down. Ian, calm down. Hey, get rid of the book. Be with us. And I'm like, oh shit, here I go. I gotta go over here. You know, because I am spun up about learning. I am spun up about what I'm doing. That eagle, that eagle that started flying out of the chicken coop, you know what he had to do? He had to have courage, man. He had to have courage to know that there was, he was once Asher, he was once Elian, he was once Reuben, and then he said, why not me? Why not you? Why not you? Why not you be the top of your company? Why not you be the face of your company? Why not you be the face of your town? Why not you be the most interesting person in the room? Why not you be the best leader in the world? Why not you have your kids look up to you? Why not you? Why not you? Oh, because your dad was mean to you when you were a kid? Wah, 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 wah. My dad went to get milk, never came back. Best thing that ever happened to me. Okay, when I was a kid, I didn't think so. I didn't think so. Now, I use a lot of these wounds as my weapons, and I'm dangerous, man. I can tap into this emotion at any time, and I can say, ah, yeah, let's go, mediocrity. I'm gonna kill your ass. I'm ready to go, man. I'm ready to attack it. So, number one, if everybody worked hard on here harder, harder than you do now, would you make more money? Okay, zoom over, I'm exiting. That's all we needed to do today, okay? That's it. Guys, if we just worked hard, we get better results. So after you get off of this call, if you just do the same old damn thing and you don't go work tirelessly, then you don't get it and you're not running the LE group play. We actually work really damn hard down here, man. There was a time where me and Andy were working 18, 20 hours a day. There was a couple days where we would stay up days at a time. Like, man, and, 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 and you know what? It's, if you do a lot of the hard work now, it's crazy the leverage that you create within your skill. Now I could work half as hard, I could close three times the amount of customers just because I know my skill because I put in more work so it created more skill. Like right now, if Melanie's talking to 80 people, I was just talking to one of my sales people, he's like, man, I talked to 120 people yesterday. I'm like, that's crazy, how many did you close? He's like, four. I'm like, if I talked to 120, I closed 118. 
Like, you know, because I, I've done it for longer. I've, I've worked harder in that amount of time. There's a guy that has the same, same timeline as me. He started on the same day as me, but because he didn't work harder, he didn't get to where he needed to go as fast. The lead strategy that I originally had that I was known for in Colorado and at my dealership was, there was a McDonald's across the street of my dealership. And I was this young kid that they, you know, you couldn't get ups. Like they were like, get out of here, bro. You can't get these ups. And so I would go sit down in service and I would talk to every service customer and they would tell me, dude, you're going to go broke down there. Like, don't do that. And I, and I knew in my brain, if I got around 200 people and you only got around 50, but if I did that every single day, well, eventually I'd be the best salesperson of all time because I would have more reps than you. I'd have more reps than you, more intentional reps than you. I went across the street to the McDonald's. My brother would stand at the beginning. I would stand at the end because I was the closer. They'd pull through. He'd be like, hey, before you uh, order your McDonald's, listen, we want to give you a $1 little certificate. Listen, um, we also wanted to just see right now, if somebody were to give you more money for your car, would you be just interested in getting a lower payment? Would you be interested in swapping it? Like, would you be interested? We didn't even have that great of a pitch. They'd say no. And then they'd go through and then it'd be my turn. You know, if they said yes, I would jump in the back of their car and be like, pull right over there. You know why? Because for the first couple of times, I made mistakes because I was new. And I'd be like, all right. They'd be like, yeah, I'm interested. And I'd be like, all right, meet me over there. And they'd be like, yeah, we'll meet you over there. And then I'd run over there. Yeah, I got one. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd get over there and they weren't there. You know why? Because I didn't have experience. Experience means a lot in sales. It does. And you can gain more experience by doing more work. So I used to say, they'd say yes. And I'd say, all right, open your back door. And I'd jump in their back. And some people be like, dude, you're so stupid. You're going to die doing stuff like that. I'm like, dude, I'm going to die not selling cars. You know what? I'm going to die if I don't eat. Okay. So I'd much rather die trying in the back of somebody's car than just not eating. Okay, people. And I'd ride across over there. And you know what I started doing? I started selling 20, 30 cars out of service, 15, 20 cars out of McDonald's. Within a few months, I was a 50, 60 car hand. And everybody's like, it's so hard out here to sell cars. I'm like, you just don't want it, bro. You just don't want it. You're walking by people at the grocery store every day that want your product, but you don't have the courage to talk to them. You don't have the courage to go up to them and say, hey, I'm Ian, this is what I do. I didn't go out with my buddies in my 20s. You'll never see me a picture of me out with my buddies in my 20s, maybe three of my friends. You know why? Because I was working, bro. I work so damn hard sometimes. You know what? This is bad, but my best friend said, hey, I got a wedding on a Saturday and I was supposed to be his best man and I didn't go. Hey, that's bad. I'm not telling you to do that. I regret that today. But you know why I didn't do that? Because my mentality was Saturdays are our biggest days in the business. So I ain't going nowhere. Okay. I saw a lot of people running around with the losers, not doing anything. And then being like, oh, I don't know why I got this bad check because you're not working, bro. You're not working. Now I see many of them today. They're doing the same. They're running the same play. Can you imagine that? The same. They're running the same play. So number one, what's your work ethic really look like? If I followed you around all day, Eric, would I just be so damn impressed, Ted, where I'd be like, God, you should see Ted. Melanie is just, she is on that phone. Corey is in the gas station talking to people. Mike Martinez is talking to every single person. He's going door to door with his sales team. Gosh, man, he's not just the best looking roofer. He's actually putting in the dang work, okay? I don't know. Some of you, I would go to work with you for three seconds and I would be embarrassed and I would leave and I'd be like, gosh, man, here's this guy's biggest problem. He just don't want it. So I want you to evaluate your work ethic right now. Mine's a six today. I just got pissed at myself as I was coaching you guys. Cause I'm like, man, I'm pathetic. But my six is probably like a 50 to compare to some of y'all's. Okay. So I'm just saying, I, I know there's more in my tank and I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to tap into it. I'm going to convince myself. I'm going to brainwash myself. All right, number two, confidence. I see this so often. I talked to a guy yesterday on a Zoom call, and uh, some of you guys were on that Zoom call, and this was, be this was beautiful. He goes, hey, Ian, you know, I don't know how to close gap insurance, and we've never even really taught like a whole lot of that, and I started thinking, how many salespeople in the world in the car industry don't even know what gap insurance is? They don't even have confidence in their product. They don't know the rate. They don't know the buy rate. They don't know the this. They don't know what reserve means. They don't know this. They don't know that. They don't know service. They don't know the average ROs. They don't know anything. They don't know, it. They don't know how much it is to pay a tech. They don't know all this stuff. You're like, why would I need to know this? You need to know everything about your business. Step number one, don't ever let anybody 
know your business better than you. Step number two in business, kick your own ass every day. How can I get better and kick my own butt, okay? Listen, if I'm Ben Helland and I'm, in a, and I'm a financial services guy, I sure as hell better know every financial service product out there. I sure as hell better know all of my competition's products. When I was selling cars, people would be like, hey, we're comparing you to this dealer across the street. I was like, okay, great. Hey, listen, they actually have a cheaper price. So you, you might wanna go with them if that's the way you wanna go, but here's how it typically works and here's what you're gonna find. When you go with Larry Miller and you get all the way through the process, if you don't buy the 2,900 bucks in finance, they'll ask you to leave. You've now, mint, you've now spent an hour and a half with them. If you don't believe me, go look at their Google reviews. I'm not talking stuff, matter of fact, they're a very good company, they do a lot of good business and they got a cheaper price. But at the end of it, you have to buy this stuff. Are you planning on buying that stuff with us? No? Okay, so just go take a look at Google review, you make the decision. I'm competent about my product. I'm competent about my competition. I'm competent about any area. You guys can ask me anything about my business. I'm trying to know it. I'm not a know-it-all. I'm coachable. There's things I learn every day, but I'm like, I think I know it. I'm trying to know it. I'm studying it every day. I'm, 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 I'm like, dude, how do I look? Actually, matter of fact, I'll show you an invoice. I just paid a guy $20,000, which was more than I used to make in sales in a month to teach me a little bit more of a process that I heard him say on YouTube. I got, I got the same funnel as you guys. I saw this guy on YouTube, I'm like, damn, I like that. Damn, I, 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 I don't know the ins and outs of that. And somebody's like, hey Ian, we'll teach you. And they're kind of like the second rated version of him. I said, screw that, I'm gonna go pay this guy. I paid him 20 grand yesterday, I texted Andy, I said, man, I feel so good. He's like, why? I'm like, I just paid 20 grand to learn this little process. And he goes, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Well, I know, man, it, it literally won't even affect my income, but it'll affect my mindset. You know, I start my first class at Harvard in two months. I'm, I'm paying lots of money for that. I'm a guy that didn't even go to barely high school. They gave me a degree because they felt sorry for me because there was two of me and they felt bad for my mom, so they just gave us a degree. They were like, hey man, you guys suck. This is literally just take the high school degree. Don't come back next year. You've already tried this two or three times, <laughs> you know? but. Now I'm going, I'm going to take a class at Harvard. Why? Because I just want to know what they know. You know, I want to have some information about these businesses that nobody else has. I'm obsessed, man. I can't sleep. I'm hungry. I'm starving. And that's what the world's missing. Some people on this call, if you've never met me, you're like, this guy's too much for me. I know, bro. Just literally like there's so many other programs that they'll talk to you like a baby and they'll just say, Hey, how are you today? I can't sleep, dude. I'm, I have trouble I, like I'm driving 120 miles an hour here. I know I'm obsessed. Uh, the obsession is how I live, so I don't know how to talk any different. And by the way, the people that try to conform you and tell you to be less than, uh, man, I'll do well with those people, man. I've always been too much. Everybody's told me I'm too much my whole life. In high school, they told me I was too much. That's why they tried to throw me out. And then I got in sales, and you know what happened? Every, all the owners were like, I love this guy. This guy is too much. We need more too much around here. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? My ADD was too much. Now it's now it rewards me in the form of millions. You know, they were like, oh, this is too much. Now it's just, it's, it's amazing that it's too much because now I can handle too much. Okay, so I'm too much, man, for sure. Um, number three, you know, how to sell, how to ask the right questions, how to build the right rapport. Let's go over this. I just wrote these down. I was going over the steps that I see in businesses every day. And I wrote that a lot of people, they just don't know how to sell how to ask the right questions, how to build the right rapport, how to generate the right leads, how to size up competitors. If you weren't on our lead generation Zoom in school, Jonan, drop the link. Man, I'm mentoring in that, in that process. Dude, we did 20 lead generation strategies. Most salespeople don't have one. I just taught 20 of them. I've got seven more that we're using here to organically generate 1,500 leads a day. I'm always teaching it. Are you using it? Are you there? Are you missing it? Don't miss it. But let's go over number one in that, in, so it's number, in, in number three, how to sell, right? You gotta learn how to sell, you know, but you need to learn how to not sell too. Like how to, how to build a relationship. Selling to me is a funny word because I don't really use selling as a word. I use serving because I don't ever really go into the relationship like what can I get for me? I go into it, what can I give for them? Like, what can I get for them? If you ever go into a networking relationship like, man, I'm gonna get this guy's business, I'm gonna do this, I think you already lost. I'm like, what can I give this guy? What can I give this guy? What, what does this guy need? What does this guy need? You know, one of my, I, I really wanted this partnership um, because I've known this guy for a lot of years. He's, he's a, a self-made 
in the car business, you probably just can never come across, he's, the, he's a true .001% in the car business. Because he's an owner that literally flew for, just moved from Canada with his family seven years ago, opened up a lot with one car, and then now he's got five locations in the one city. He's the biggest luxury automotive dealership in the world. Now there's Penske Autos that are up against him. There's billionaires up against this guy, and he's beating all of them. So man, I'm like, man, I gotta give this guy value. How do I get in the room with him? I went and bought a Formula F1 racing simulator for 30 grand and just showed up on his door in a U-Haul with it. It's gonna be on my YouTube tomorrow. Why? Because I just felt like, man, if this guy's customers could get in and experience that, and he could experience that, I didn't even go, and he goes, hey Ian, what do you wanna meet on? After, he goes, he's, he's like almost in tears. He's like, nobody's ever given me anything like this. Now listen, you don't have to give money. You could give time, you could give energy, you could give effort, you could give anything. When I was in the car business, there was a real estate agent that was the most popular in town. So you know what I would do? I would go over to her and I'd say, hey, I'm gonna shake a sign outside of your open house. I'm gonna do the work. You don't even need to hire anybody. I'll do this every Sunday for the next year. And she's like, you don't have to do that. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, give me the sign. And I go out there and I did it for forever, man. And you know, after four or five weekends, you're like, okay, this is kind of stupid. You know how many deals that lady sent me? Hundreds of deals. Hundreds of deals. You know how many Sundays that I was there for? Like 60 of them, okay? Over a year I was there. Most people would quit twice in, they'd get motivated by an idea and then go backwards. Most people, I canceled my day, flew down there, I said I'm bringing this guy something, I called a relationship that I've got and the guy gave me a deal on it so I didn't have to pay the full 30 grand. You know, I, had a big, I got a little, I got a deal, but um, what, what, what way do you show up in relationships? What way do you show up in friendships? What way do you, he goes, sell, sell me what you wanna sell me. I go, bro, I'm not here to sell you. Take the machine, call me later. How do you ask the right questions? How do you build rapport? Listen, if you've been in the car business, I've told you this for a thousand years and you can do this in any industry. When you walked into my lot and you had kids, how I would build rapport was different than everybody else. I had Hot Wheels hanging up all over my office. You can use this in your business. And I'd say, hey, before we get started on going and looking at a car, hey, let me give your kids a couple Hot Wheels. I'd bring them over, get them Hot Wheels, get them a coloring book, sit them down. And then I'd be like, all right, parents, hold on. We're, we're all set. Now, how can I help you? You know? Their walls are down. They're like, I've never seen this before. I've never experienced this before. When I got off the phone with you, people, you called me and you told me something. I got off the phone with you. I'd say, yeah, tell me your wife's name again. Tell me your kid's name again. Okay, cool. I've got that written down. How many times do you forget names in here, guys? All the time. You need to write them down. You need to know their kids, their family's names. You need to have that in their file. You need to be a true professional. And you know what I do? I say, hey, tell me what your uh, wife would like from Starbucks. It's right across the street. I got to get her something. They tell me no. I'd say, hey, listen, it's a, it's a requirement. Listen, when you're with our dealership, if you were here and my wife was here, she'd feed you. I have to do it. Whether I get you an empty cup, water, cold coffee, doesn't matter. I'm getting you something. What would you like? They say something because in my voice, I sound relentless I sound like it's happening no matter what I'm sold I'm sold you know you want to take control take control right when you get off the phone cool I'm gonna have that coffee ready for you I'll text you 10 minutes before I got it perfect tip they pull up to the 10 minutes before the the customer got there I'd have a picture of the coffee send it to them and say hey can't wait for you guys to get here walk out with coffee bring the kids in for a coloring book you're sold you're sold dude if you did that every time how could you fail one tip, how could you fail? You couldn't, you couldn't, but most people don't wanna invest in their customers. Most people don't wanna do the work. Most people like to just make an excuse and point at them versus pointing at themselves. That's the problem in the world right now. The tip that I just gave you, you could customize it for whatever business you're in and it will it'll make you millions of dollars over the next couple of years. 100%, 100%, 100%. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next thing. But you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta think about how do you sell? What's your selling style? Here's my selling style. I just out care everybody. I just outdo everybody. I go the distance. Let's say you leave me as a prospect and you're like, oh yeah, I gotta go think about it. I'm like, cool man, here, hold on one second. I go back to the back, I come back, I got a handwritten note, I wrote you a note. I'm like, hey Melanie, it says, hey Melanie, I saw how you are with your kids, you're an amazing mom, looks like you're a great wife, I just wanna tell you, keep it up. I'm super, super thankful for you coming in and spending your time with me. I included a $5 Starbucks gift card for you. Thank you, go have a good day. Thank you, thank you. 
What am I doing? Number one, I'm different. So when I say I'm different than other people, I'm really freaking different than other people. Okay? When I, when I say it, listen, hold, hold who's on mute. Okay, we got somebody off mute. When I say I'm different than other people, I really believe it. And you know what persuasion is? That you believe in what you're saying. Not you got cute word tracks, but when I'm like, Mr. Customer, I'm different. They're like, oh yeah, we hear that all the time. And then when I perform these different things, you know what happens? I create a brand. Everybody wants to talk about creating a brand. You know what a real brand is? I create a real one you know what it is it's a reputation with the marketplace my reputation with the marketplace was that I was relentless that I really truly cared that I really would go the distance that I really would step up that I really did follow through my promises that I really would show up for you let's say you went to the other dealership let's say you went to the other company and I didn't hear back from you I'd send you a video and I'd say hey guys I was just thinking about you guys I want to tell you guys you guys made my day watching how your family operates was just a lot of fun thank you guys for giving me the ability to meet you appreciate you guys send the message Let's say they didn't answer. I go right to their house. You know how many people, how many times I got in trouble for just showing up at a customer's house? My dealer would be like, Ian, those people didn't like that. Yeah, but you know how many people did like it? A lot. You know, a lot. A lot. I would close a lot of deals and I would get complaints. People would be like, hey, he showed up in my house. It was a little weird. And I'd be like, okay, whatever. No, no worries. But you know how many people were like, man, that guy like literally came to my business, bought me Chick-fil-A nuggets and literally demoed the car out here to the whole staff. You know, if I knew you were a business owner, everybody say self-aware, awareness, self-awareness, okay? If I knew you were a business owner and you were Ted and you had a business of five people and your office was down the street and you said no to me, I'd be like, all right, cool, no big deal. And you're working through it. You were thinking about buying the product. I would show up and give Ted staff Chick-fil-A. I'd buy, I'd spend 50 bucks on Ted. Show up, give him some Chick-fil-A. I'd be like, hey, Ted's thinking about buying this car here, guys. Just see what you guys think. Come check, just check it out. Just, just take a look at it. See what you guys think. I'd let the staff go sell Ted, okay? Think, guys. You know, and then they're like, oh, I love this guy. And he bought food for us. Reciprocity doesn't happen anymore in the world. Everybody is a what's in it for me attitude versus how can I serve and what can I give? If you flip that mentality, you'll change everything. You'll change everything. All right, next one. Oh wait, in, in number three, I want you to just put, you know, you gotta read some books. You gotta take some sales courses. You're taking a sales course now, but how many books have you read on your industry? Like if you're a financial broker, I mean, you should know all of the, the, top, the top dogs in your industry. If you're in car sales, you should know all of the top dogs in your industry. Be reading the books. Number, number four, number four, your identity. Your belief in yourself is how far you're going to go in this world. And belief and identity is earned. People think that you just earn happiness. You just wake up and you're happy. Well, good for you. If you're just naturally a happy person, I'm not. I'm not a naturally happy person. I'm a naturally high D alpha guy that wants to go get it and, and, and I got to be experiencing some results to be happy. I know, maybe that's not the best thing. But I'll tell you what makes me happy. When I'm pursuing something, you know, we're meant to pursue as humans. We're meant to pursue. You know why a lion is a lion? Because a lion goes out there and pursues. And when he catches the damn bear or the elephant, you know what? They go catch another one. Some of you guys, you just ain't pursuing. You ain't catching the damn prey. When you, when you catch the damn prey, you realize it ain't even about the prey. It's who you became on the pursuit. It's who you became on the way. It's who you became on the hunt. It's who you became on the journey. But your identity is the governor to your life. It's that it's the governor to your life. If you're running at a cool 60, you're running at a cool 60, you'll get cool 60 results. If you're running at a hot 120, hot 110, you're freaking creative, you're on fire, you're thinking, you're moving, you're shaking, you're growing. You'll just attract the market. You'll just attract the relationships. You'll just attract all of the things that you want. It's crazy, man. The world just rewards this kind of vibration. Like if you really put your identity out there and you're starting to believe in yourself and you know behind the scenes you're doing the work, you wanna talk about how to increase your identity? Do the work. Do the work. Do the work. Stop listening to your emotional feelings. I don't wanna to go to the gym today, I'm tired. That's when you go to the gym. I don't wanna make the calls today. That's when you make the calls. I don't want to stand outside of McDonald's today and, and, and talk to people. That's when you stand outside of McDonald's all day and talk to people. Okay? When you do that, you start having a bigger identity. Secondly, a bigger identity comes from being around bigger people. You know, if you're making 10 grand a month, you need to get around somebody who's making 10 grand a minute. And then they'll just start to adjust your identity. If you're around somebody that has a better relationship than you and your wife, eh, that will adjust your identity. 
That will be that will make you better to your wife Imme immediately. When I hear Andy talk about his wife, I'm always texting mine on the side like, hey, I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, I'm such a piece of shit. Damn it, I need to text her right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, like constantly, dude, okay? If Brandon Sandoval is a 400 credit score and he gets around me and I'm an 800 credit score, you know what's gonna happen to him? He's gonna go wanna go make dumbass purchases and if me and him are running together, I'd be like, bro, that's not how you're gonna get to where you wanna go. All right, if you're a little overweight, I'm just gonna say it, and you come to dinner with Andy and you wanna order, you wanna order, you know, five enchiladas and he orders grilled chicken and he's looking at you with that stare, you think you're gonna order them enchiladas? No. Your ass is going to order that grilled chicken, okay? So your identity also reflects who you're around. Now, we're one percenters, so we're going to be surrounded by the 99%. Imagine dots everywhere. Dot, 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 And then there's one dot in the middle. That one dot in the middle is you. You're not always going to be surrounded by one percenters. Now, I am because I built a company on that because I wanted to be, okay? But my whole life, I wasn't. My whole life I was beating the shit out of 99 percenters and staying away from most of them, protecting my energy from most of them. You know, I was very, I was very aware of who was in my inner circle. My, my outer circle was everybody because I was surrounded by them. But that doesn't mean I gotta be like them. That doesn't mean I gotta think like them. That doesn't mean I need to operate like them. That doesn't mean I need to treat my wife that way or treat my credit that way or treat anybody that way or any of that stuff. It just means I'm like, oh man, that guy sucks. He's doing all this stuff wrong. I'm not doing that. You know, I watched a lot of people go through divorces in the car business. I watched a lot of people give up their health in the car business. I watched a lot of people give up everything for this idea of money. It's crazy. Then I watched these guys that own mega stores. They were, in the, they were sales managers for a couple of years. Then they were a general manager just because they had the right relationships. They had the right health. They had the right frequency. And they're getting it all. And I'm like, why is that guy 10 years younger than that guy, but he's that guy's boss? Why does that guy look better than that guy? Why does that guy, why, what's going on here? And I go, oh, that guy's a one percenter. That guy's one percenter. He understands how to build relationships, so that's gonna, number one, take you the furthest. He understands how to take care of himself. That's gonna take him far because he believes in himself when he's needing to close an investor or somebody else, or you know, he actually knows what that means and knows how to do those things. So that directly reflects this guy's identity. And then this guy believes he can own five stores where this guy just believes he needs to, he's just gonna be there his whole life. Like, there's just a difference, right? So, I mean, it's just the truth. Like, your identity is gonna directly determine how far you go. So, the reason why we have seminars every month is because we adjust your damn identity. We adjust your identity. You get around me for three seconds, I don't care who you are. I coach billionaires to the guy that just started. Your identity will, will, will adjust immediately, immediately. Let you say some little baby ass shit around us, man. Some baby ass dreams, some baby ass goals. We're gonna adjust you, man. We're gonna keep you thinking bigger. A good coach is gonna have conversations with you that you don't want to have. That you don't wanna have, most of the time. They're gonna challenge you to think some things that you've never even thought before. And they're gonna get you to see a potential with inside of yourself that you didn't even know that you could have. And that's what a good coach is. That's why we just install some new thoughts in your brain on these calls. That's why some of you have been on these calls for years and you achieve really big things. And that's why some of you will be on this call two more times and then you'll be back to your old life. And you'll be like, I tried that Elliott group program. It didn't work for me. Bro, you didn't work for you. You didn't do the work. You didn't do the work, bro. My shit works. I know if you do this today, you're on fire. You're growing. Customers are seeing you better. I know if you do the work in the system, you know, I had a guy yesterday, he canceled our, in our school program. Um, Jonan, drop the link. It's the best program out there. I mean, we're doing so much in it. It, it. It's got networking of high level relationships. I'm doing Zoom calls all the time. There's a public speaking course this Thursday where we're teaching how to public speak. It's where I'm at, it's more of my private mentorship group. Andy jumps in there now and then too. Um, and we just do some badass shit. Jude, Jude Browning's on here. I got him a, a job yesterday just because he shows up to every call and he said, Ian, I want to work for this top influencer. I said, done. I called in. He didn't even know it, but I called the influencer and I said, hey man, I want you to take a risk on this guy. I want you to, I want you to believe in this guy. I believe in him he believes in you you sign him up he signs him up he's like dude my whole life changed on that phone call why well because he showed up and we got a cool network part of your identity is who you're running with that's why I built that school community is so you could run with other people that want to go where you want to go you know they can give you different things um, 
but I forgot where I was going with that. So the people that you're around directly reflect who you are. They really do, you know? And I know that when I'm around like you guys and why we do seminars every month, that's where I was going with this. The reason why we do seminars every month is because, man, you got to get out of your normal circumstances. You got to get out of your normal everyday activity. My cell phone number is right here, 480-780-2203. If you ever want to come down to a seminar, you come down. Now, I challenge you guys, if you're ever coming to a seminar, to text me, come earlier, and like walk through my morning routine, man. I've let many of you guys come and work with me. You know what I mean? I've let some of you guys, shit, some of you guys have moved here. Like, you know, we got Sean Watson on the call. He's here with us every day, man. He was in the parking lot doing push-ups earlier. You know what I'm saying? He's wild, okay? Um, but number four, just really think about what your identity is. You know, I think a lot of people, they don't realize the story that they're creating. You know what I mean? Like, they don't realize, like, my story sounds cool 10 years ago, but you know, it wasn't that cool. It was, it's cool now that I'm outside of it, but I directly remember doubting myself and being like, damn, is this going to work? Stop that. Stop that. I directly remember not sleeping at night. I directly remember all of these things that sounded, they sound so cool right now, but they don't sound cool when you're in the storm. They don't sound cool when you're running up that mountain at 110 degree heat and you're throwing up and you're thinking you're gonna die and then you don't die and you get down and you call your wife and you tell your wife, oh, you should have seen me with the LA group. I killed that hill. I murdered that thing. But on the way up the hill, you look like you just, you were, you were lost up here. What you gotta do is on that journey, as you're going up that hill, you need to stop and look. Dude, there's palm trees. When these people come down here, they don't know that the mountain that they're running up on is the most beautiful mountain because their mind is only thinking about the suck. Their mind is only thinking about the storm. Their mind is only thinking about how hard it is and they're not looking around. In the storm, your ability to keep your attitude top tier 100% is gonna determine how far you go. If your life is burning down right now and you're just burning down with it, man, I don't know how to help you. You need to reach down, grab those things, and, and get your shit together. Because you're not supposed to burn down with it. What you're supposed to do is say, hey, this is how it's supposed to be. I'm going to adjust. What am I missing? Let's go after it. I'm going to have a good attitude about it and go. But in the storm, man, it's not a lot of fun. I've been in the storm. There's always seasons. After every summer, there's a winter. Some of you are in summer season right now. Go harder. Some of you are in winter season. Go harder. Some of you are in spring season. Go harder. It doesn't matter. I'm in summer right now because I was in winter for two years, going into debt, thinking I was gonna go bankrupt. When we were opening this company, we were calling every night in a 200 square foot freaking little deal, like just trying to figure it out, getting two, three leads a day. I'm getting buried in debt. I got you know three nephews at home. Their mom, my sister passed away. My sister, she didn't have life insurance. She went to a party. She did some things she shouldn't have done and her brain exploded. You guys know what I'm saying? It happens every day in America, you know? And my sister had three kids, a two-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a 17-year-old. They didn't have dads, man. We came from broken families. And um, we inherited those kids, right? You know, and, and when, I, when we went to open this company, I'm like, dude, I still got to make 30, 40 grand a month just to like break even on my family bills that I've agreed to, just on the things that I've agreed to, just on my, like my old life. Well, I wasn't making that. But you know what, during that storm, I never doubted myself. I said, this is exactly how it's, God is giving me a battle right now to see how I deal with it, to see how I deal with it. And if I can deal with this battle, I can deal with any other battle. You know what, now I've got all these resources, these dragons, these freaking AK-47s to deal with all these big battles, so they're not even hard anymore. And I'm more equipped because I've been through that suck and I actually like stopped and I sat in it and I didn't try to get out of it. I enjoyed it. I said, this is exactly how it should be. This is exactly how it should be. And I just sat there and I enjoyed a little bit of that suck and I didn't have a bad attitude and I didn't blame anybody and I didn't blame God and I didn't blame any of that shit. I just said, this is exactly how it's supposed to be. And then you know what? Now I'm outside of it and I'm 10 times crazier. I believe in myself anymore and I know that I can handle these bigger battles. And now these bigger battles that I know would break most people, dude, they don't even touch my soul. They don't even get close to me. They don't even get close to me. But what you do when things are not going right is really who you are. And in sales right now, if you're getting your ass kicked 
and you're you're blaming shit, you're blaming the dealer, you're thinking about quitting, you're thinking about all this stuff, dude, I got something to tell you, dude. You're the problem. I worked at dealers that were less than perfect. You guys all want perfect companies now and you want perfect everything. Man, I worked in broken ass companies and I made them not broken. I worked hard at building them. This company is a, still a new company. We're still figuring out everything every day, right Jesse? Ain't, you know, we are still figuring out things every day. We are still paying thousands of dollars in coaching. She's, you know, she's one of our leaders here and she was just with, she was just in a different seminar in a different state learning her job better. Like this is a, this is, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a say, there's a saying that I've always lived by. Sometimes I say it wrong. I'm going to try to get right. But the person that enjoys walking is always going to get further than the person that just enjoys the journey. The person that enjoys walking, like I enjoy just being on this journey, man. I enjoy getting my ass kicked a little bit. I enjoy like knowing that I'm building something. How can you build a tough human being without putting them through stuff? You can't. So how can you ask God or anybody, whatever you believe in, how can you ask them to be strong if you haven't been through a war, if you haven't been through a battle? Like the, the two don't even go together. They don't even go together. So for me, I'm like, man, like this is for a reason. Like, and, and if you have hope, then hope will lead you through everything. Hope will lead you through everything. You know, the founding fathers, when they started this country, Ben Franklin and all these guys, you know, the average male lived to 54 or 55 years old. Okay. These guys were living to 90 years old, 80 and 90 years old. That's like us living to 130 today. You know why? Because they had more hope than everybody. Some of you guys, I don't see the hope in your eyes. And then some of you, I see so much hope in your eyes where it's like, you're like, just, you know, it's going to happen for you. You believe it's going to happen for you. And I got something to tell you. If you do the work, it's going to happen for you. Hell yeah. John, John's like, yeah, it's going to happen for me. I know it. I know it. You got to have that belief that it's going to happen for you. There's not a lot of people on these calls every day, like that are just doing these works every day. I mean, there's a lot of these people are so damn distracted. They don't even care. All right. Number five, number five, people skills. You know, um, when I go places, man, um, I think people don't have a lot of people skills. I'm sizing people up. I'm like, Hey, uh, all right, cool. Let me see what this guy's kind of doing. Let me see what this girl's got going on. But listen, I never make the mistake to size people up too hard and think that they're broke or they can't do it or whatever. I walk into a lot of places and they, they size people up so hard that like they talk themselves out of a sale. I watch my biggest commission in the car business came from a guy that everybody was sizing up and they're like, Oh, this guy's, he's got bummy clothes. He's got this. He's, and I said, listen, man, no matter what, I'm going to give everybody a shot. I, listen, I understand that like we're selling cars and we can't sell them to like totally broke people, but like we, we might. So like, I'm going to go try. I'm going to go make a friend. I'm going to go serve him. I'm going to go make him happy. I'm going to go, I'm going to go have conversation because everything's communication and conversation, right? I go talk to this guy and in like three seconds, he's like, yeah, I was in the Navy. Um, I haven't been on land in 11 years. I'm like, what? that's a weird thing to say. And he's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm an engineer. And um, I've just been going ship to ship and I, and I'm, I haven't been in port. And so I, I just retired and I moved back here. I just bought a house down the street. I met a girl in a bar and me and her bought a house like the next day. It was crazy. That's what he told me. And I'm like, no, 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 no. What did you do? He's like, she was amazing. She's got two kids. And I'm like, he's like, I'm helping the kids. I'm like, I don't know. Is this guy getting put together? You know? And then I'm like, and he's just the sweetest guy. And he's like, yeah, I made about 400,000 a year untaxed for the last, you know, 10 years. It's okay. I got the money. And he goes, what's this car right here? The new Pathfinder came out. It looked like a pregnant roller skate. Y'all ever seen it? it? Looked like a pregnant roller skate. And um, I'm like, ah, oh, this thing sucks. We put the brown one on the showroom floor because it couldn't sell. And you got a $2,000 spiff if you could sell it, which would made me rich back then. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, shoot. I'm like, hey, what about this one? He goes, oh, that's the perfect color. I'm like, yeah, it is. Let's get in it. He goes, oh, I can't drive. I haven't driven a car in 10 years. This is for her. She's going to drive me around. I'm like, oh, that's crazy. All right. Well, I know the steps to the sale. I'm not going to not let this guy drive. Steps to the sale. Hey, this is a good salesperson. A good salesperson not just knows the steps to the sale. They know where the customer is at on the steps to the sale. So when that customer says, oh, I, I can't drive, I'm like, here, I'll drive for you. Let's get in the car. So we can create the hype. We can create the movement. We start driving around the block. He's like, this is great. Let's go ride it up. How much is it? I'm like, oh, the, the, the price is on the sticker. And he goes, oh, it's only 58,000. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, that's got the addendum. It's got all the good shit on there. And then we go inside, man. And, um, you know, he's like, uh, okay, how do you want me to do this? And I was like, well, let's just like run a credit application. He's like, I could just go get a check. I'm like, no, 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 I don't. Uh, let's just, let's just see what's going on. 
run his credit. He's an 850 credit score. I'm like, you know, I'm like, hey, you can write a check or you can get 0%. And car dealers, we get paid more on like rate and stuff like that, right? But we'd much rather capture 0% than cash. So I'm like, All right, you, he want to do that? He goes, oh yeah, that's amazing. Let's do that. And he comes back two days later and buys an Xterra, full price. You know, I go over to his house and this is where most service would end because you made a big commission. He doesn't know how to drive. He doesn't know how to do these things. I schedule the next day off and I go to his house and I teach him how to drive. And I, and I just hang with him all day. And I'm just driving him around, showing him different things, showing him the city. He's like, you're the nicest guy I've ever met. And I'm like, I've made the biggest commission ever on this guy, but honestly, I'm obligated to also give him the best service, right? A lot of people would just sell him and they'd be like, oh yeah, I kicked that, I fucking clobbered that guy. I'm like, dude, yeah, I clobbered him, but now I, I owe him a premium service. I owe him something, right? So, but I didn't overqualify that guy. I got with him and I was like, hey, what do you do? What? And he tells me, and then I'm like, oh, this guy could do something. Like, let's, let's start moving. Let's start treating him like even better. Like, it's good, man. Like, that's what you gotta do, man. You're in the people business. You're not in the sales business. You're in the people relationship business. You're in the communication business. You're in the leadership business. You're a leader. Can you lead these people? Nobody had to tell me. My boss didn't have to tell me, Ted, hey, go go uh, give him a great service the next day. Matter of fact, they got mad at me. They were like, Ian, you're our top salesman. You can't take a day off to go hang out with that dude. I'm like, listen, dude, screw you guys. You're not, you're, you're not building my brand. This is my brand. And I do things the right way. I don't need you guys that haven't sold as many cars as I, I've sold telling me what to do. How about you guys just sit there and type up the paperwork? I'm going to go do Ian, okay? I didn't play by rules. I never had a schedule. Some of you guys got schedules. I was on the C schedule. A, A schedule, B schedule, and the C schedule. See you when I see you, bitch. I'm coming in when I'm coming in, okay? Because I'm making, I'm usually the one that's there at six in the morning while all you guys are sleeping. I'm helping out service. So they never worried about me. And then I leave at two in the afternoon. I go, go to Mexico for three weeks. It wouldn't matter because when I was there, I was out working everybody, out thinking them, out hustling them. Ah, just going crazy on them, guys. But your people skills, man. Does your face look, I, I wrote this and this is probably a piss some of you off. Does your face look interested? Does your face look disrespectful? Some people, I walk into a, a, into a meeting and like, I'm like, all right, I'm not going to say the F word. Andy does this too. He's like, I'm not going to say the F word. And then we look across at some of these companies and these people just have these faces that just look like they're uninterested and like they're just, and then my brain goes to like, man, that's somebody's dad that's giving up on his life. And then I just get angry, man. And, I, and honestly, I probably just need to mature a little bit. I probably need a couple more years. You guys will see me, I'll be a little bit more polished in like a year or two. Um, but right now, I don't have it in me. If you look uninterested and disrespectful to your family, I just straight tell you. I'm like, dude, what's your problem? Like, you got one life. Like, you got kids. You got, you got, you're going to have kids, whatever it is. Somebody believes in you. Somebody doesn't believe in you. What's your body language look like? Half of sales is just body language. Read the book, Psycho Cybernetics. It's a great book. Original personal development book. Watch somebody's tone. Watch somebody's body language. Guys, can you tell when you're with somebody that really cares and really doesn't care? Isn't it like just a human emotion? I think John Lancaster has the book right there. I mean, because if I tell him something, he's the kind of guy that probably just goes and does it. Well, some of you just sit on your ass. I'm telling you, man. I don't know, man. It's just crazy. Like, there's, there's, when I walk into a restaurant, can you tell the waitress, you get the waitress, you're like, oh man, like, she just don't care. Hey, how crazy is it with waitresses that there's some of us that if you just gave us some love and some, 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 just some, just some good service, we tip you 30, 40%. And then you go into a you go into a into a restaurant, and now they got the tip on everything. When you give them less than twenty percent, they're like, "This guy's so disrespectful. Screw this guy." And you're like, "You're like, you didn't even earn this shit. You didn't even earn it. Like, you can't even go into a place. You go into most places right now, and they just they just think that they deserve a tip. A tip is earned." Okay, it's the same thing in your business. When, when, when people come into your business, how do they feel around you? How do they feel around you? Do they feel the entitlement, like you deserve this? Or do they feel like you gotta earn it? I feel like I gotta earn it, man. If you ever come to my business and you feel any entitlement going around, you feel like my team doesn't want it, please let me know. I'll just kill them right there on the spot, murder. Why? You're gonna, somebody's gonna record that and be like, they, see, I know they're in a cult, they murder you if you don't smile. Yeah, you're right, we do. I catch you not smiling in our company, dude. You, we got a serious issue. Serious issue. Serious issue. That's like a, 
that's like an expulsion offense, like from school. They used to, I've been expelled a couple times, but it was like for bad things. But like, that's a bad thing to me. You know, I'm like, what's life when you can't smile? Some of you got a very awkward smile because you don't use it enough. You're like, oh fuck, he's gonna make me smile. Like, you're like, oh, I don't wanna let my teeth out. Oh, I'm kind of weird smiling. Like, listen, dude, everybody look at Sonora, how he smiles. Like, I don't even, he's in like India or some shit. And he's just like, look at him. He's on every one of my Zoom calls. He's the happiest dude I've ever seen. I was telling him the other day, I look at him on most of the Zooms because he fires me up instead of pisses me off. Some people, I can't look at you on Zoom because I'm like, and this is not, I'm not being disrespectful, but it like brings out the worst in me. <laughs> but that's sales. Sometimes you bring out the worst in your customer because you look uninterested. You look like you don't care. You look like you have these thoughts going up in your brain. I got news for you. Everybody has something going on up here. Your ability to show up and clear that stuff out and just be locked in that's gonna be the, the, the height of the altitude of where your paychecks go. We all have something going on at home, but when I look at your face, can I read all of the bad that's going on or can I read the good? And if I can read the good, then I'll likely just do business with you just because. I texted that business owner that I spent 20 grand with yesterday and I said, um, here, let me just go to it real quick. And this is kind of important to me. It may not be important to you, but this is kind of like the Andy of that space and I said, I said, I said, hey buddy, um, it's Ian Macklin from the Elliott Group. I got your number from Andy Elliott. Um, I was gonna connect with you directly, but I wanted to go through the process with your team. Um, I got Malik on Friday. This guy was phenomenal. I'm super impressed. Dude, he had great energy. Um, I'm highly critical of customer service and just the overall process because it's the space that I'm in. He sent me a gift to my office. He separated himself from everybody. He knew who I was. He was prepared on who I was. Like, man, I am totally blown away. That kid is a stud. That meeting alone was worth $20,000 just to see the fire in that kid's eyes. That's what I wrote. And the, guys, the guy was blown away. He goes, dude, like that guy was just a, he's a newer, he's one of my newer guys. Like, you mind if I text this to my company? And I said, yeah, dude, absolutely. I mean, and I'm a hard person to please for sure. Like I'm, I'm, I'm watching every, every second, right? So it's like, if we could just take that and just use that little lesson into our business, it would change our businesses. Like it really would. Um, but number six, believe in the product. You know, I bleed this company. I bleed it, man. I, I, I bleed the company. When I was in car sales, everywhere I went was about car sales. Everywhere I went was about service to these customers. Everywhere I went was about making my name. I didn't go to, you know, uh, Andy would take, oops, wait, I just clicked out. Andy would take uh, general managers with me um, to uh, Chipotle. He'd be like, watch how Ian does this. And I'd walk into Chipotle because I've done this a thousand times. And I would always walk out with two leads. He'd be like, watch, he'll, he'll get a lead from anybody. They'd be making my burrito and I'd be like, hey, oh man, thank you so much. Hey, you look nice today. And they'd be like, thank you. You know, I feel kind of down today. I'm like, why? And I'm all connecting with them. And then I'm like, well, hey, listen, you know, hey, do you drive a car? You got a car out front? I, I'm a car dealer. We're doing a little bit of a survey just to kind of talk about people's cars. They're like, yeah, I got a Honda Accord. And I'm like, you're kidding me. Man, those are the car, kind of cars that we're looking for. Listen, if my boss was willing to give you more money than your car was worth, could I just text you what that number would be? Would you mind? And these general managers would be standing next to me like, oh my God, is this a real thing? And I'd get one. And she'd be like, and, and I, I, I would never get a no because of the way that I connected with them and the way that I talked to them. And I would always, and Andy's done this like 50 times with me. He would, every time we were out of town, he'd be like, hey, let's go to Chipotle, watch how Ian can get two numbers. And if I didn't get one on the line, I would walk over to somebody and I'd say, hey, oh my gosh, hey, I like your shoes. And they'd be like, oh, thank you, man, I just bought these. I'm like, where'd you buy them from? I wanna get the same ones. They'd be like, oh, I got them from this place. I'm like, that's crazy, man. Are they, were they good? We're like, were they expensive? They're like, yeah, I'm like, oh, that's crazy, man. What do you do? And they're like, oh, I work for this company. I'm like, oh, that's wild, what do you do? And then I'm like, well, I sell cars. Right now, we're just running around the neighborhood just trying to find out um, what kind of cars people have. We're just taking a quick survey. You mind if I ask you two survey questions real quick just so I can note it? They're like, yeah. I'm like, what kind of car do you have? Honda Accord. I'm like, oh, you're kidding me. How, how you know, on a scale of one to 10, what do you, how do you, how do you like that car? And they'd be like, oh, it's like a seven. I'm like, why? And they would tell me and I'd be like, hey, well, that's crazy. Right now, what we're doing is we're lowering customers' payments. We're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. You mind if I send you some information? And they'd be like, yeah. And I'd be like, boom. And it's like, it's not even hard. But is it hard to just take the courage to do it? Yeah, but if you did that every time, then you would become somebody that was even a better salesperson. I watch salespeople call on credit apps. You know, like, um, like if you couldn't get a, like if John had a, 
500 credit score. We couldn't get John Bot. We could get a lot of 500s bot, but if we couldn't get John Bot, salespeople would do this. They would say, hey man, sorry we can't get you bot, man. You know, you mind calling a cosigner? Most people ain't even going to call one. I'm like, John, listen, dude, listen. We're going to help you get excellent credit. I've been in situations like this my whole life, John. You want an 800 credit score? He's like, yeah. I'm like, you want jet skis? Yeah. You want a house? Yeah. You know how you're going to get that? A car. You know how we're going to do that? I am going to call the person that believes in you the most. Who's the person that believes in you the most? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to that person. I don't want you talking to them. I want to talk to them for you. You know why? Because I want them to know what's really going on here. That we're going to build your credit, that I'm going to take care of you, and I'm going to show you how to get an 800 credit score. John, dial the person. John be like, I don't know, man. I'm like, D -d John, dial the person. John, call his grandma. I'm like, hey, Grammy, hey, this is Ian down here at XYZ Chevrolet. I'm the credit coach. I know you don't know what that means. Let me explain real quick. My job is to help John get an 800 credit score. I'm going to help him start to scale his credit up. It's going to be super easy for him. We've got to get him started somewhere. I'm sure at, in your life there's somebody who believed in you at one point in time, right? They got you started on your credit journey. Is that right? Like helped you out or something? They're like, yeah. I'm like, that's what we need for you. We just need you to sign on the dotted line next to John. John doesn't have bad credit. He just doesn't know how to build credit. So I'm going to walk him through all that. He's going to be a customer of mine for life. And I'm going to take really good care of him. And if he's made all the payments, which I'm going to make sure that he does. I'm going to be right there with him every step of the way. Um, at the end of the year, we can you know, refinance him or get him into a different car and get him into his own loan. It's going to be super simple. It's not hard. John's going to have a couple steps. That's it. And then they would be like, if they said no, I'd be like, okay, here, listen. You know, John's got two kids, right? And so John has to start getting his credit going because John wants to get a house. John wants to get a car. John wants to get, you know, things for his family. So since John believes in you the most, you have to help me find somebody for John because if John doesn't get this, then John's never going to be able to have that life. So who are we going to call? You guys want to hear? Let's get on speakerphone. Guys, all of you guys together, who are we going to call to help John get this car? Who are we gonna help? Who are we gonna call? Because this isn't just buying a car. Let me make this totally clear to every single person that's on this call. This isn't John getting a car. This is John buying his credit. So John has to get his credit going and I'm gonna be here right here every step of the way. You can tell that you've never had anybody ever call like this ever to your house and care like I care. Do you know why? Because I know how to take people to where they need to go on their credit because I've been doing this for a long time and I refuse to not believe in John and not give John a chance. This is a moment that's gonna change John's life. Who's gonna help us change his life? Which one of you? They're like, I'll do it. I'm like, cool, we'll be over to your house in five minutes. We're on the way. John, I got you. John's like, dude, yeah. Hell yeah, Ian. You know? Or if it didn't work, you know what he did? He left and he went and figured it out, but he knew I cared. And you know what, more than anything, I knew I cared. I knew I cared. My dealer knew I cared. Everybody knew I was different because I truly did different shit. I truly had to have courage to get on the phone, do different stuff, believe in my product, believe in my company, and go harder than anybody. And if you can have that, then you can have a different income. If you can't do things like that, then you're going to stay the same just like everybody else. It's totally up to you. It isn't up to me. So today, you can be different. You can unlearn some of these things. You can learn some of these things. You know, if you're competent, if you know how to sell, if you know how to build relationships, if you know how to adjust your identity, if you know how to change those things, well then this stuff will change your entire life. Now, everything comes down to your attitude about these things. If you're fired up right now, you'll change. If, you have the, if your attitude is totally attractive, you'll make more money. If your personality is attractive, you'll make more money. If you're smiling like Nadine, you'll make more money. You know, if, if you really want it, you'll make more money. If you, and more than anything, you'll make a career. You'll make a life. You won't just make more money and give it back. You'll make something that you can look back on and be proud of. Man, I'm so proud of myself for not giving up. I'm so proud of myself for staying on the journey. I'm so proud of myself for making the investment. I'm so proud of myself for doing the coaching. Jonan, drop my coaching one more time in there where you can meet me. I've got a public speaking course coming up next on this Thursday. We've got a lot of things that I'm doing inside of this little platform. It's like 90 bucks. You can get in and be coached by me every freaking couple of days if you want to jump in with me even more if you want to connect with me otherwise i'll see you on tuesday every week be me or my brother sometimes both of us and i want to just encourage you guys believe in yourself you know whether you're just starting out or you've made it go harder tap into something different you know fuel yourself up man believe that you're the one believe that you're not that chicken you're not a chicken. You're an eagle. Get up and fly with the damn eagles, man. Fly with the damn eagles. Go out there and soar. Go out there and believe you're the top dog. 
Who's the number one in their company? You better be you raising your hand. If you're like, oh, it's Johnny, stop that. It's you, it's you, it's you. If you believe it, you'll get it done. There's a little famous saying, if you believe it, you can achieve it. It's the truth. Without the belief, you don't have anything. And you're here because you believe it. Look at Elian jumping around. He's like ready to punch a hole in the wall. It's like, you just gotta believe it, man. We were all, every influencer that you know I've met, I guarantee they were all just a guy on a Zoom call at one point in time, trying to figure it out or doing really well and wanted the next level. Every one of us are the same. We're no different, we're fighting the same demons. But your attitude about how you fight those demons, your attitude about how you uh, face that next level, how crazy you go, the investments you make. I, you just saw me make an investment. You can join calls, you can join coaching, you can execute or you don't. It's like you get, you get two choices and only two. And the craziest thing about it is I'm, I'm getting paid for some of the choices that I'm making now that I made five years ago. Five years ago, I was making these hard choices. Three years ago, I was making these hard choices. Two years ago, I was staying on this coaching. Two years ago, I was developing, and I'm getting the reward for it today. A lot of my friends and a lot of my family, they're not getting rewarded for these choices. Actually, their life is going backwards because they didn't make these choices. But up front, here's how choices work. There's no consequence right now. A lot of the times there's no consequence right now to making bad choices. So it doesn't matter if you don't show up to the calls. It doesn't matter if you don't make the extra phone calls. It doesn't matter if you don't make the extra investment. You can't feel it. You can't see it. It's not tangible. That's the problem. But I make decisions based off of the future consequence. I make decisions based off of the future me. How that person is gonna function, what that person's gonna feel like, what they're gonna have, what they're gonna, every, I make future-based consequence decisions. And you can too, if you're smart. If you're not, you're just gonna make temporary decisions on temporary feelings today. So don't do that, and then you'll look up a year from now, and that's when you'll truly get it. So thank you guys, appreciate you guys. I'd love to see more of you guys on more calls. Appreciate you guys that are always showing up and going crazy. Invite somebody to the school community. If you're on the school community, invite somebody to it. There's no bigger value in the world. Um, school community, we're dropping the new blueprint that we're gonna walk you guys through, which is physical, mental business. If we can correct and make a transformation in your life in 90 days, we guarantee you can hit the next level, and we've decided that that's one of the things we're gonna focus on heavily. So thank you guys, appreciate you guys. Guys, I'll see you inside. Fire, bro. See, I just keep plugging.